up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. We are your hosts, Kim and Erin G, the creators of the online course Travelers School, and your favorite healthcare travel friends. Your rad travel couple. Your rad travel couple. We like <laughs> really were trying to bring that to life at one point. We were. I think we still. I think should. it's got a ring to it. It's like hashtag rad travel couple. Everybody understands radiology, but we're rad too, and we're radical. Radical. Perfect. Rad rocks. Rad rocks. Okay. Our boat. Welcome to episode 29. <laughs> Crazy. 29 episodes we've been doing. It's been like six months. I know. It seems like yesterday. Holy moly. So this episode, we are going to do another traveler quick tip. Just the tip. Just Traveler the, edition. Just the tip. So short, sweet, to the point. And we're going to be talking about traveler burnout, which is something that comes up a lot Mm -hmm. in our industry. It's just a part of being a traveler. It comes with the package. And so we're going to kind of talk about that, share some of our own experiences with it, some of our (laughs) own stories. I don't know why it's making me laugh. Well, because they're extreme. A little bit. And then we're going to give a couple tips to help with traveler burnout. So with that, let's just jump on into the episode. Let's do it. All right, so before we get into the traveler burnout conversation, we have some really exciting announcements. Yes, the first leg of our worldwide trip has been booked. Booked. So there is no turning back. There wasn't any turning back to begin with because now we, it, we went full bore with announcing it on the podcast. We held ourselves accountable. We talked about it in our group. We stopped being on the TravCon committee. Yeah. We went all in. We, we definitely went all in. I think, yeah, if we had to be like, just kidding, well, that would be humiliating. We wouldn't be able to do that. So, but there was something about we booked the flight, we booked the room. And so it was just like, oh, wow, like we are really doing the damn thing. Like we are going for it. We are jumping in. And the first leg, well, it's not really the first leg because we are going to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, But that was booked before we even knew we are doing this. So we're kind of going backwards. It's like I wish we would have known what we are going to do this whole thing because I would have went to New Zealand and kind of just kept going and did Australia. And then... Well, that would have been a lot more logistics because of the fact that we were here in Chico and we right. have to get back to Florida. Right. So so the plan is we're going to New Zealand. We're doing our camper van trip there, which has already been planned. Then we're coming back to California and then we'll jump in the Jeep and drive across country once again to Florida to be with my sister, be with the family. And unfortunately... Leave Mimi Larue there. Aww. I know. It's actually kind of heartbreaking. I know. But... And what's crazy is, is I just updated the calendar and just put the five-week mark up on the calendar. So five we have five weeks. weeks left till this whole thing kicks off. Oh my God, I'm so Five scared. weeks. I'm so nervous. I know. I'm nervous and excited at the same time. Oh, we didn't say where we're going. Okay, so we're going back to Florida and then we leave on April 4th. Mm-hmm. Dates have been chosen. 4-4. Four, four. And we did 4-4 four, four. Because it's 2020 and 2 plus 2 is 4, so it's 444, which were big numbers, people, and those are angel numbers. So Mm -hmm. that felt like the perfect day to go. And so we are leaving Florida and heading straight to Mexico City. And we will start in New Mexico and then just slowly make our way through Central and South America. And that's going to be like the first, we'll spend a couple of months there just kind of farting around and um, making our way through the countries down there. Yeah, it's definitely all super exciting when you just focus on Central and South America. It's like You you have to. Because my head will literally, like the emoji with like the brains coming out, Mm -hmm. like that's me if I start to think, and then we're going to Europe, and then we're going to Asia. And then it's like, we just have to keep it one focus at a time. And Mm -hmm. so south america for a few months and then we'll kind of just go from there yeah and we binged some youtube videos last night on lima peru um yeah so we got really excited for the upcoming journey there i'm excited a lot of food tours a lot of orange theories oh yeah like that's like our main driving force is food. Like I'm so excited. <laughs> Under a hundred dollars a day, though. Yeah. So our well, we'll we're gonna do a whole episode on on how 
we have budgeted for this trip and the difference between like vacation and doing long-term travel and how we set up our budget because there's been a lot of questions about that. I had a lot of questions about that. So we're going to cover that. Um, but yeah, definitely be trying all the foods and sharing all the things every step of the way on our daily vlog on our YouTube channel. So yeah. check out Kim and Aaron G to follow along with us. And, and taking um, the podcast on the road too. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about traveler burnout. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Traveler, as travelers, we, and I'm, and I'm spe specifically right now talking about healthcare travelers. So as healthcare travelers, our job is to move around every three months, right? Our contracts are typically every three months and we're moving from place to place to place. And while that is one of our absolute favorite parts about traveling, because that's the fun of it, like the road trips, getting to a new city and exploring all the different things you want to check out in that new area. Like it's fun. It's exciting. There's something about that newness mm -hmm. that never gets old to me. It's that fresh start feeling. Yeah. That fresh start feeling and just that like buzz, that excitement of like, oh my gosh, we're in a brand new place and you get like your list going of all the places you want to see and then you can start to explore them on your time off and it just gets exciting and it's usually like a couple months in we start to get itchy feet again because mm -hmm. we're kind of like okay been here done that like let's move well, on I mean, even moving to the new city there's an excitement around finding your new gym and yes. finding your new grocery store and just your new route to work and yeah just different things like that i don't know it's all still exciting it's fun it's yeah. exciting and i think you have to that has to excite you to be a traveler yeah because if it doesn't <laughs> you're going to get burned out way faster than the normal traveler. Absolutely. But the truth of it is, or like the reality of what that looks like is that every three months or, you know, typically every three months you are packing up your stuff. So you're closing down, you know, wherever you're living. So packing up, right. Driving to wherever you're going or flying or flying. But so we drive mm -hmm. everywhere we go. So that's a road trip. That's, you know, having to get to where you're going, find a new place to live, get set up, find your, you know, your grocery store, your hospital, get into a new routine. And while that's all fun and good, doing that every few months yeah. is, it's tiring. I mean, it's a lot of work. It is. It is. And I mean, even thinking in five weeks, we're going on this epic adventure. It's still the thought of, What's looming is they're still packing up this apartment. We've been living here five months. Yeah. Five months. So that's, you know, when you live somewhere five months, even though we don't have a lot of things, it still is a lot of work and closing down everything, closing down the electric, the cable, the Wi-Fi, the, you know, just everything that comes with that. I think that's one of the biggest things too, is that there's so many decisions that have to be made. Mm -hmm. All the time, and especially during this transitional time. So not only physically are you packing up and moving, but emotionally, mentally, you are figuring out where you're going to be going. Mm -hmm. What's going to be your contract? You have to interview. You have to go through the process of which contracts are going to be the best fit for you. Then you got to find your housing. Then you got to figure out your route to get to where you're going. Like there's so many decisions. And I honestly think that can be exhausting just on it on your own. I mean, I'm grateful that we have each other. Mm -hmm. So we're able to like bounce things off. But these solo travelers, man, it's just like a lot to take on. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's not to scare anybody that's not traveling. That's actually a lot of the fun of it because you that's a skill that you get to learn. And I can honestly say that I think that's one thing that travelers don't talk about that much. But if you can conquer that part, if that muscle builds big in, in, in your overall daily you know, life, you can pretty much take on anything. Oh, yeah. Like you are set up to rule the world. I will say that, yeah, tra because of all the decisions that we have to make, and again, these are quick decisions. Our industry moves very quickly. So when you're trying to figure out what contract you're going to take and interviewing and all that kind of stuff, like these things happen quickly. And so the more you work that decision-making muscle and the mm -hmm. more you lean into your gut and your intuition and listening from that place of like, yes, this feels right, or like, no, this doesn't, and kind of making quick decisions off of that – the easier it is and the more confident you become listening to yourself of mm -hmm. what's right too, yep. you know? So it's, it's an amazing way to learn and grow and connect more to what you want. Um, but it, it doesn't mean that it's not exhausting 100%. when you're okay. We've been traveling for almost eight years. And so 
that's a lot. It's a lot of motion. It's a lot of moving. It's a lot of thinking and it's a lot of decision making. And so this is something that's cool. If you are a traveler, there will be a time at some point where you feel burnt out you want to quit, you want to go back to full time because it feels easier mm-hmm. and you just want to hang the whole thing up. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to give a couple of tips that will help and things that we have done that can really help with the, the burnout. But before we do that, I thought it would be fun to share the two stories. There's two like really pivotal times where we've been burnt out and have like made some rash, not even rash decisions, but mm-hmm. just like Decisions I don't regret because... No, not we, at all. And again, we made some... They're going to sound really extreme, but there was meaning behind them. And I think they were things that we had to explore or else they would have constantly weighed on us. Yeah. So the first time we were in Seattle, mm-hmm. we... This was a couple... Of, so this was 2016, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Facebook, thank you for mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. announcement mm-hmm. <laughs> that two years ago on this day... Or no, it was Four. three. No, it was three years ago. So we left December of 2016. 17. 16. We started our journey in yeah, 17. Three years, yeah. So, yeah, they just posted the video. They Facebook did. So we were just like over it. Like we were over it. We were both working. We were just tired. And we wanted to, you know, we had used that contract to really pay down some bills, save up some money, like, because we were both working and it felt like we were just like working our little asses off. We were, we were you know, trying to start a fitness business <laughs> <laughs> um, where, you know, we were doing things online and then we were setting up uh, circuits in the park and just like putting time and energy into that kind of stuff. And we just felt totally pooped and we wanted a break and we wanted some time to go like figure out our life and like, what do we want? <laughs> what do we want to do? And we just felt like we need... A break and so instead of just being like putting our stuff in storage and being like we're just gonna go travel for a few months and kind of take some time and figure things out we got rid of okay I guess we have to put context around this because we got rid of everything we owned when we started traveling originally but then we ended up so acquiring this, a lot well specifically we ended up going permanent when we were in Palo Alto Mm -hmm. working at Stanford because we really loved it there and we thought we were going to stay and so we got an apartment and so we got a couch again and we got a bed again and we got stuff again because we thought we were staying not to mention 900 pounds of kettlebells 900 pounds of kettlebells for our fitness business Mm -hmm. and all the circuits we were doing so then after being in Palo Alto for what we were there for two years or so three years yeah we were like, oh my gosh, we're, what are we what are we doing? We want to start traveling again. We are ready to go. And so we got a U-Haul and took all of that stuff with us up to Seattle. Because so we're like, we'll just figure it out as we go. Mm-hmm. So now here we are in Seattle with an apartment full of stuff that's ours. 900 pounds of kettlebells. Oh my God, we even had an office like with a, yes. with a bookshelf oh and God. all oh. that stuff. A desk. Why We had like thousands of pounds of books. Yeah. Like just a mess. So we had to get rid of all of that stuff again. So it's basically like we were starting to travel all over again. We got rid of every single thing. Every kitchen stuff. We donated it to one of the other people that I worked with. They were they had just bought a camper, so we just gave them all of our stuff, all of our kitchen stuff. Yeah, we got rid. We sold the kettlebells. I mean, we just we got rid of everything. We packed everything again into a couple of suitcases, and we said we were moving to. Asia. <laughs> Burning our scrubs, never coming back to the hospital. We're done. We're done. We're, done. we're going to go and we're moving there and we're never coming back and we just need to like get away. And we ended up going, what was it, like four months or yeah, so? We four took, months. we ended up taking a total of six months off, but some of that time was spent at home. And we went to Asia, had the time of our lives. And, you know, obviously we didn't move there, which is a thing. People move there all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really funny because we were just like, we're done, we're going. But that was the time that we needed. A, it sparked this huge like wanderlust travel bug, which I had already had. But it just kind of like heightened that. It gave us YouTube. It gave us the healthcare traveler trainings. I, I, all that was, stuff It was came, everything. Yeah, it was, from that trip. It was amazing. So best thing we could have done. But it was this extreme exit of like, we're done. Starting I don't want to do burnout. this anymore. Yeah. So then we ended up coming back and, um, and we, you know, started traveling again and taking contracts or whatever. So that was the first like big burnout that we had. Yeah. The second one came in 2008, 
19. This was last 18. year. Yeah, last year. So 18, um, I ended a contract at Yale. And the thought of moving again, the thought of finding another contract just seemed so overwhelming. Um, so Kim and I had been mulling over the thought of going back to Jacksonville, Florida, where we're from, mm -hmm. going back to the hospital that we met at and working PRN and being settled for a while. Who knew how long? I mean, we signed a seven month lease, which was crazy. That was like, that gave me heart palpitations just thinking it about did, it. It did. And we should have listened to that. Um, there, but then we were like, well, it's different. It's scary. Whatever. We're going to do it. And so we settled in. And one month into it, realized we had made a huge mistake. Well, hold on. Take it back. Because our old manager, who we are good friends with and we work there forever, like we have a good relationship with, basically like created these PRN jobs for us. They didn't even exist. He created them for us so we could come in to the hospital. We legit go to orientation. Two days. Okay. We had what? One day left. Mm -hmm. One day left of orientation, and then we are starting in the department the following week. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh my gosh, like we started having the conversations, like things weren't feeling right. We weren't sure what to do because now we're like, oh my gosh, like he went out on a limb. He's, you know, gotten us these jobs. We have this apartment. Like, what are we doing? What have we done? And after kind of like going back and forth, we're like, we we don't want to go through with this. No. Like, th like, this is not what we want. Like, things just didn't feel good. They didn't feel right. And it was just like this feeling of doom. Mm -hmm. And we're like, what have we done? And so one day before we're, or the, you know, the Friday before we're supposed to go start our new jobs, we had to go to... The manager oh, slash our feeling. friend oh. and tell him, thanks, but no thanks. We're actually not going to take these jobs. And like, we're supposed to be at orientation right now, but like, we're not ever going back. Right. And we had to go in and tell him and you were like shaking and crying. Uh, it was awful because we, I, had, I had gone back and forth with him a couple times where we thought we were going to come PRN and we didn't. And then I was like, I'm telling you, we're coming mm -hmm. this time. We're coming. We're doing it. And, you know, your sister even said, like, I'll believe it when I see you guys pull in. And we yep. actually pulled in. And then we were like, sorry. Oh, my gosh. But we such assholes. Man, we went in. We bought an apartment. We bought a couch. We bought a bed. All we were, from Ikea. We were buying, like, murals for the wall. Oh we were settling in. Well, and it took you, like, a week to set up all of that freaking furniture from Ikea, which... I know it's cheap and the stuff was cute, but never again will I, I don't know how you had the patience to sit there for like a week and put a, together all that. And after all of that, we had to call Ikea and they're, they, so they give you a year and it, you can return it through the year. And so I called them and they had to come pick up all Remember of Remember how mad the guys <laughs> were because they were like, wait a minute, it's put together? <laughs> they and we thought were like, it was still in the box. Like actually it's all put together. They were livid. Yeah. They were livid. Yeah. So they came. They got everything. We had to break our lease. And um, and we started traveling again. And again, it all worked out, right? It all worked out. It could have been that Kim and I were responsible for another six months of our lease. But they had somebody move right in. Mm -hmm. We got out of our lease. It was fantastic. It was meant to be. But it was funny because in hindsight, we actually saw because we got our orientation at our new jobs pushed back a month. Because we didn't have some stuff in on time. So that extra month of having some time off allowed us to realize that we were just, you know, we needed a little break. It wasn't yeah. wasn't that we wanted to quit traveling. We just didn't want to jump into a contract right away. We weren't ready. And I, and, and I think, again, the important, like the takeaway is that sometimes you do have to take a break or you have to try something to see if it's what you really want. Going home. And returning back to Florida, working some PRN, maybe taking a contract here and there or something, but having Florida be like our home base was something that we really thought about for a while, for like a year or two mm -hmm. years. And we would go back and forth. Is this what we really want? Do we really want to move back home? And we just weren't ever sure. Like we'd never wanted to, but then we liked the idea of being close to family and so I don't think that we would have ever, we would have continued to go back and forth and we would never have felt clear until we actually did it. Mm -hmm. And that was such a positive thing to walk away with because we did it and it was messy and it didn't end up the way that we wanted it to at all. 
but it gave us the clarity that we do not want to live there. Correct. It there it we love going home and visiting, and we we love to be able to spend more time there. But like we don't want to live there. No. And nothing could have been clearer. Correct. And so sometimes you have to do things to figure that out, and that's exactly well, what and happened. I, and I love too that we went all in. Like yeah, we, we said, committed. if you if you want to live in Florida, where would you want to live? And we said we want to live at the beach. And so we got a beautiful apartment at the beach. We didn't like skimp and go like inland somewhere and, right. and live it because like we felt at that point there would always be that but. But we didn't live at the beach. What if we lived right. at the beach? Would it have been different? Like, mm-hmm. would we have liked it more? We were in a different spot. So like we went all in and we did everything that we thought we wanted, got there and realized it right. was wrong. And so now we can literally cross that off the list. Done and done. So there are, there's negatives and positives to everything. And I yeah. think when you can weigh that out, it's really beneficial to, you know, where you're going in life. Because, I mean, if you're just like, oh, this was so bad. But what were the good things that came out of it yeah. that allowed us to move forward in a more, like, narrow Every focus? Every experience is there to teach you something. 100%. And if you have that kind of mindset, then you can always take something away from the experience and use it as a way to grow and to be better and to get clarity around what you really want. Yes. And so all situations we've done in life might, like some have not turned out the way we thought they were, but they were always opportunities to reflect. And it always led to our right next step. 100%. And I, I firmly believe that. And that's just like my um, like faith. You know, that was well said. That's yeah. what I was trying to say. That I fumbled through <laughs> You're it. You're welcome. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, but you know, that's the beauty of the industry that we are in as travelers is that you can take pauses, you can take t- steps back, you can explore going back to full time because you can always come back. Mm-hmm. You can always come back. Like the, it's not going anywhere. So as long as you're in conversation with your recruiters of like, hey, I'm taking some time off or whatever the case is, you can always come back when you're ready. It's not like this huge deal. So when we went to Asia, when we were ready to come back, when we were like, crap, like let's come back and we're ready. We need a contract. We need to make some money. And uh, we were able to reach out to our recruiters and Aaron took a job in the Uh, an airport in the Philippines at like 2 a.m. and like locked in a job and it secured us in and it was easy. Well, and I think, I think going into this next um, adventure where we're taking a year off, it's like not as scary because at any point with whatever happens, Mm -hmm. we can always call our recruiter and say, Hey, we're back. Right. And so it's not scary. It's not a scary leap because the worst that could happen for us right now, which is not even a bad deal is calling the recruiter and getting another contract. Exactly. And I think that when I start to feel nervous about things, because it's like such a like a big commitment that we're making. But at the end of the day, again, we could be three months in and be like, yeah, we're over it. Actually, mm-hmm. we want to come back and for whatever reason. I don't think that's going to happen. Gonna happen. That's not going to happen. But if it did, we have the freedom to come back and take a contract if we want to. And there's so much freedom and flexibility with it. It just mm-hmm. makes making decisions like that that much easier. Yeah. You know? So let's get into the tips. Okay. So the first tip to help with burnout is this is so obvious, but it's extending your contract. Mm-hmm. We just talked about extensions last week on the podcast. If you haven't listened to that, go listen to it. Um, but most not... Most of the time, not all the time, they might want you to extend for a certain period of time. And if that feels good to you and you like where you are and it feels like a yes, extending is a great way just to stay put, Mm -hmm. just to stay where you are and not have to think about moving or anything else. And that can really help um, with, you know, feeling. Yeah. And I think, too, it's funny because you said it last week in the podcast. It was really good. But just to reiterate, it was kind of interesting because one of the travelers that you talked to said that he felt like he's done everything in this area. And I thought that was really funny because that's how we felt in San Francisco, where we wanted to extend because we had so many more things we wanted to go do. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't a driving force of like, we want to extend because we like the job. It was more or less like we have more things in San Fran that we want to do. Yeah. So let's extend and get those done. Yeah. Right. It was funny because here it's like, I feel like we've done everything. everything. I'm ready to go. And once that hits, I'm usually ready to go. We're ready to go. Yeah. 
And we, this has been the longest we've ever stayed anywhere as a traveler. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've been here for eight months, but it made sense to keep extending because we're both working. So we're making good money. We were able, our goal was to pay off our debts, which we were able to do because we were both working and crank up our savings, crank up our savings account. So that again, it goes back to what your, your why is and your goals. Ours was, was strictly financial. And so it made sense to keep, to keep extending if your why is you want to go to as many places and mm-hmm. have these experiences, then staying one place for eight months isn't going to support that, right. you know? And that's the other thing too we didn't really say, but uh, the, the the cost of moving every three months, mm-hmm. it's financially draining. Like you make good money as a traveler, but because we are in a transitional period a lot of the time because we finish three months and then we're going to the next place, you're not getting paid for that period of time, you're getting a new apartment and, and all of the things that it takes you to even get to where you're going, it costs money. So extending is a great way just to save money and help you stay grounded for a little bit longer. And so if it feels good, even you don't even have to do the full 13 weeks, just do another you know right. six weeks or whatever. So. That's a really good one. Yeah, I did see on a, on the Facebook group, uh, there was a couple travelers that their why was they want to do a contract in every state. I saw that. That's yeah, really cool. I that was interesting. Right. And yeah, so you're they're going to be on moving. you're going to be on the go, mm-hmm. right? But if that's part of what excites you and inspires you and gets you going, like that's all, you know exactly. what I mean? We all have our different reasons. Exactly. I think um one big thing that can help with burnout um, other than extending is really simplifying your life, right? I think that's one thing that Kim and I noticed when we first started traveling. We were, I had my truck, Kim had her car, so that means we had to go to U-Haul, get a tow hitch, mm-hmm. hook up Kim's car, worry about towing it. Um, we had tons of things. We had Christmas ornaments and Christmas lights, and Kim always says a blow up Santa <laughs> hanging out the windows. I, um, but it paints a pretty vision. it paints a pretty good picture of all the stuff that we had. And so when you're loading up in three months, all that stuff once again, even if you never took it out of a bin, still having to lug that to the car, load it in the car, make sure it fits in the car, make sure it's secure, loading up the other car, that gets a lot. It's a lot. And, and so that's when we realized that. Not only do we want to keep traveling, but if we're going to keep traveling, we need to make this as simple as possible. And that has eliminated a lot of the stress in between our moving around is when we can load everything into the Jeep. I take pictures of it after I load it. So then that way I can refer back to it and remember how I loaded the the Jeep up because it was perfect and Mimi had room in the back and we were comfortable. And so everything I can do to make it efficient and moving out, we try to do because that's what helps getting from place to place. I feel like that's like the perfect job for you because you love like puzzles and like Mm -hmm. Tetris, like that, like that kind of a game. I feel like it's almost like a game. Mm -hmm. And so you're really good at like getting everything in and it fits like perfectly. And there's literally not room for one more thing. No, I don't know how you do it. I have nothing to do with it. Just so you, like we're clear, like I do nothing. Aaron is in charge of packing the Jeep or we'll end up in a fist fight. Yeah. Because you do take a long time to do it. But oh, I, just, I, I, so we have our roles. Aaron packs the Jeep and gets all of that taken care of. I don't look his way <laughs> or I'll start to shake yeah. with anger. And I do the cleaning inside and kind of get all that done. And then by the time we're both done, it's time to to pack up and head out. Absolutely. The other thing too is with simplifying, you know, using traveling as a way to pay off debts, to build a savings account, to get yourself in a really great place financially because there's so many opportunities to be able to do that. And the more cushion you have, the less bills you have, the more financial freedom you have, the easier it is to take time off in between contracts, to take time to breathe, to take time to go home and see family or just take downtime, whatever you need to refuel, you're able to do that and not feel stress around it. So like work really hard, get your financial house in order, and then know that you'll have more breathing room. And I think without breathing room, traveling would be would be tough it would the be. back to back to back like that i think it would be really tiresome so it would it would always be in the new kid all the time like having to deal with that mental break and then just being away and like that's why i love if you're even if you don't want to extend and do what kim and i do like at, at one point i think in from 2000 
17 to 19, I think we only worked like it was a total of like a year out of the two years. So yeah. we, it basically added up to, you know, taking a full year off. Right. Um, because we would do a contract and then we did one. So we left for a really, six months, did a contract, did two contracts and then took three months off again or five months. Actually, it was January or no, it was March to May. So we took three months off again and then started yeah. working again and then took the rest of the year like off We like to take that. a lot of time yeah. off. It's like our thing. So I was saying, even if it's like taking a couple of weeks and going back home and just totally decompressing before you start again, yeah. those are ways to really help with burnout. hundred percent. I think the more time you can take for yourself, even just being able to, one of our favorite things to do is when we start a new contract, giving yourself like a week before you even start work. So you get to get there, get settled in your new apartment, find your gym, go grocery shopping, get into your routine, but then also have some downtime to go explore, to relax, whatever. Just giving yourself that wiggle room before you have to jump into a brand new contract because that's the other thing is like you're starting a new contract. There's a lot that comes up with that. It feels very overwhelming the first couple of weeks. There's a lot you're learning and taking in. So the the more um, easy you can make that transition the overall Absolutely. experience is going to be. So. Yeah, that was one of our travelers, Heather, that we talked to all the time. She said that she tried to move to a place and start right away. And that's one thing that she realized in her burnout was she yeah. was doing that back to back where she would just get into town with three days to go before her next contract. And then she would just start. And she was like, I can't do that anymore. I need to give myself that buffer to like adjust yeah. to all I the newness. I can't even imagine. Oh, I know. And I think it just goes back to, and we'll end it on this, is the the financial freedom right because the reason people do that is to start working and get paid and that's great but if you have a bit of a buffer and you're able to really simplify your your life financially it gives you more room to breathe and i think Mm -hmm. that is the biggest freedom that we have and that's Mm -hmm. something that i value so much is i value my time way more than money but you have to have money to support that time and to support the things you want to do right and so i would rather live so much more simply and have more and have little but be able to have that time 100%. that I need for myself and 100%. not worry about the money. So anyways, that's kind of that's kind of our jam. Yeah, that's, that's it. it, right? That's yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Um yeah, so if you found this helpful, let us know, leave us a review, give us feedback. And um, if you're a healthcare traveler, make sure to join the Travel Life Freedom and Scrubs group if you're not there on already on Facebook because we do trainings in there all the time. And we also have our online course if you want a deep dive, a step-by-step walkthrough of um, everything there is to know about traveling. Uh, Traveler School is our course. You can check it out on our website, kimandarong.com. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Yeah, that's it. Doodles. Deuces.